It's your boy Trey Stone. You're watching High Visions. What's up guys, it's your boy Eric, back with another episode of High Visions. Today I'm joined by Trev Stone. Trev Stone, welcome to episode number 11, High Visions. We've got so much questions for you, and uh, yeah, get it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's tight. Yeah, that's fucking insane. You gotta teach me about ABC soon, yeah. Crazy, crazy stupid dumb. Love you, Harry. Love you. Trev Stone. First and foremost, tell us who you are, where you're from, and all that. So, uh, my name's Trev Stone. Uh, my 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 real name is Trevor Stone Gosler. So like my whole name, my whole rap name just comes from whatever the fuck my mom named me. You know, Trevor Stone, Trev Stone. I'm from Reno, Nevada. Born and raised. I'm 22. So, uh, what made you want to start music? My dad is a musician, so that he's not really like the reason, but I always felt like he's a he's a huge reason why I probably got into music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? Uh -huh. So he's been a punk rocker, and he's been in bands all of my life, all of his life, and shit. And I just think like when I was like around seven years old, I decided I wanted to be a drummer. I didn't become a drummer until like 12 years old finally when I got a set. So I was a drummer, became a drummer, um, and that was like the start of my whole music. You know, I've always been playing guitar, this and that. Uh, in high school, I started making beats, um, decided that I wanted to be a producer and shit like that. Um, and then after a certain point, after making beats, um, you know, I learned how to record and mix and master and shit, and I just started recording myself. Um, you know, when I was in high school too, um, a lot of the rapping came from freestyling at parties and shit. It's funny, my boy Harrison, who's actually in the building, Harrison, yeah, come say hi real quick. Harrison. What's up, y'all? He's been in one of my other interviews too, but we've spent a lot of time freestyling and shit together, parties, school, this and that, and people loved it, so I just always thought like, Right, do something with it. I don't even know. Like, there's something there, you well, know? Uh, what high school you went to? So, I started out going to Spanish Springs High School. Um, went to Reno High School. I didn't really go to school. I'm not a fan of the school system. I don't believe in traditional schooling, this and that. So, I graduated from a charter school called Innovations High School. Shout out Innovations High School, because they saved my life. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's dope. So um, one thing I noticed about you is you have your own type of style, but like growing up, what inspired your style? Like, who's your inspiration behind your style? Um, so like, uh, I feel like my sense of style is very broad, but I have a good taste. I have good taste. I have good this, good that. I think throughout my life, I've always had my own sense of style. Um, I was always inspired and had a taste in clothing and shit like that. I think, more specifically though, I think my style comes a lot from skating. Mm -hmm. um, skate culture and the mix between skate culture and hip hop. Okay. Um, kind of that punk versus hip hop like collide, you know? I love ripped clothes and shit like that, but I also love a pair of Jordans. I, lo I love my Air Force Ones, you know what I'm saying? But I love ripped jeans, I love black pants, holy pants. Um, I love shit that looks like it's on fire, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, definitely. That's sick. Um, I like to think that my style is like, almost like... Do that one, Black. Enjoy that family party. Stu, Stu called me the drip wizard because it looks like I wear like drippy, drapey, you know, clothing, but it's still like street, you know? Um, so, uh, what type of music you listen to? Like, what, what artists you look up to? So, I mean... My number, I, I, if, if I can make this, I can't, it's such a hard question to answer. Um, Travis Scott is one of my biggest influences. 
Um, I love Kanye West just in terms of like his persona and everything that inspires me. He inspires me in that way. Travis Scott musically and in fashion and art and visually, you know. Um, Drake, Drake's persona inspires me. I think Drake is fucking cool. Um, I think he's done a lot of great shit too. So, um, him. Uh, when it comes to music, you know that there's been a lot of inspirations, bro. Yeah. There's been a lot of inspirations. You know, bands. I listen to a lot of punk from my dad and shit like that. So, I got a lot of different inspirations. I'd say you feel me. Um, I was gonna ask, what's the meaning behind the face tap that you got? Um, so. Uh, there's no specific meaning, kinda. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the time, I had the idea of getting a sun and a moon, right? This is a sun. This is a sun. I was gonna get a sun and a moon, but, uh, the moon, we never got it to line up symmetrically and stuff like that. I was gonna get a moon because, like, I don't know, the sun and the moon represented my girl, or me and my girl, or something like that, but that's retarded, so I threw that out. Um... And it's like, I don't know, I'm a believer in astrology and shit, bro. Like, um, I believe in the stars. I believe that our personalities and our character traits and this and that and why we are who we are is not only just a product of environment. It's not only just a product of our experiences. I think it's also a product of literally just where the stars were when you were born. Um, I think it's relevant. Yeah, that's, that's it. And so I want to talk about your recent project you dropped. Uh, what is it called? So I just called it like period, like period. It's just a period um, that like the punctuation, yeah. you feel me? And I know you got some big features on there. Kinda, yeah. kinda. Uh, like those are guys that I always work with, I feel like. Yeah. So like, I don't know, like Stu. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if Stu's on there, honestly. But okay, ZP Radic, Castaways. Um, those are just my people, bro. I've been in this scene, in this in this local scene so much, and I think I've done enough to where I think people respect me enough to just like, just come work, you know. Uh -huh. So was there like any meaning behind the project at all? Yeah, bro. Um, so I, the story. at the time, like to be honest, bro, like I had a few of those songs just stacked up. Like the first song, Dosi's Interlude, is almost a year old. Um, I, we wrote, we recorded that shit last year, um, and it's funny because uh, I recorded that that with my homie Dosi. Dosi is Etta James's grandson. Etta James is the lady who sang a song. At last, I love like. Uh, that's that's that's, that's that, legendary. That's kind of crazy, right? So. Um, just to have Dosi on a song I think was really fucking sick so I put that on the album immediately but then there's a couple more songs like uh, 555 that one's just a hard hitting banger like it goes like tell me do you want to take a chance sorry shawty I can't I can't I can't be your man like it's just a midnight like riding in the wraith just not even in a wraith like riding in a McLaren dashing type music you know um and then you got like a couple songs. So this is like the general meaning and reason behind why I dropped it. At the time, I was going through some shit with my girlfriend, right? Yeah. We're fighting all the time, this and that. Like a lot of things are taking a toll on my mental. You know, I'm going to a dark place. Um, I have nothing to do but to write, you know? I'm thinking about all the shit that I feel like she does to me or something like that, whether or not my anger is justified or not. You know what I'm saying? I'm still feeling all these emotions, so. I think I was just going through a time where I was just writing, writing, writing. I've, I, I write some pretty crazy shit in there. Um, like there's the song number eight, Break, where I'm screaming in it. Like I have screams in it where like in the background I actually do like some screamo screams and I think that's hella sick. Um, it's halfway about fucking breaking up and me just getting some shit off my chest. Kind of sort of that I was going through at the time. Especially with the girl, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, definitely. I got you, bro. Um, 
Yeah, she's kind of mad at me about some of it, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you do a lot of shows. Um, who would you say was your favorite show ever that you've ever That I've done? opened up for? Yeah. So, to be honest, bro, like, no yeah, man, opening ahead. act that I've ever done is cooler than the shows that I've thrown myself. Yeah. Um, like, the shows that I've hen- headlined myself, the shows that I've thrown myself have been the most fun. Yeah. Um, I think, like, a fun one was Ramirez. Mm-hmm. Uh, were you at that one? Uh, no, but I, I was going to go to that okay, one. Okay, so Ramirez, Ramirez was cool. a fun one because that that's, like, my crowd. That's your, the rage. Exactly. You so, love rage. So they're the ones who can get crazy with me and shit. So that's a fun crowd. You know, if I perform for a group like Andre and Nicotina, you got the old heads. They don't want to hear my shit at all. Yeah. They don't want to hear my shit at all. So it's like, you know, you get different experiences. But if, like... Favorite show I've ever opened up for Alex, Alex in uh, Sacramento. So I opened up for Alex's Trippy Reds X. Um, I opened up for her in Sacramento, and Sacramento was dope because they had no idea who I was and they fucked with me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's weird because sometimes locally you might find that the people are kind of weird with you because they know who you are or yeah. they already got this predetermined idea of who they think you are. So. No, definitely. I get you, bro. Talking about shows, you got a show coming up. Right. Night of the Living Dead. Tell us about this show. What's going to be different from this show compared to your other shows? Tell okay. Us, tell us the whole meaning behind this. Well, so I have this little series that I've done of shows in the past. Um, I've done, I've, I've thrown about four to five of my own personal shows just by myself, putting it together, promoting it, getting all the things together and stuff. Um... You know, the first two uh, was just like a straight rap thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, Just have my homies come up, perform this and that. You know, the two after that, I stepped it up by bringing in bands, you know, some punk bands. So it'd be like a punk hip hop lineup. Um, One rapper would go up after them, the band would go up. So there'd just be this like counteracting energy of like rage and then like vibes and then like rage again you know so i think that's sick so this time what i'm doing differently is i'm just stepping everything up um the last show that i threw before quarantine and shit was born to die and born to die was a little show that i threw for my birthday and stuff and that was at jub jubs you know we sold like over 150 tickets or something like that um but jub jubs is closed so we're moving back to the holland um, and so, like I said, I got this little, I like this vision, this series vision where it's just like, the last one is called Born to Die. But now we're at this point where this is Night of the Living Dead. We've been stuck inside for so long, uh, just rotting inside of our houses and shit, you know, literally dying. Um, I think it's like, it was appropriate to just call it Night of the Living Dead, you know, like, it's time to, time to like reignite, like liven it up again, you know what I'm saying? Go out, show out, um, and live, literally. It's like, we're all dying at the same time though, so it's Night of the Living Dead, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, We got Traffic, David James, CP Radix, J the Vamp, Hobbs, Beano Beat the Case, uh, Kobe Elijah. Um, I'm gonna have my homeboy uh, Tyler Nelson come out on the drums and we're gonna play a few songs with the drums in the background, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm getting some merch made, which is really sick. Me and my boy XVII, shout out Hernan, 17. Uh, we gonna make something happen with that too. Um, so yeah, just in general, dog, like we're really trying to step everything up um, in terms of production. Just make it a bigger show. Oh, yeah. That's sick, that's sick. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, um, I've, I've been to one of your concerts before. Uh, it, was, it was Corday's. Oh, Corday. Yeah, I, I did that. Um, <laughs> and one thing I noticed is you're, you love raging. Uh-huh. Raging is you. Tell us, tell us, is, is, it, is Travis Scott the reason why? Or uh, nah. So, like, I think Travis uh, made me realize it. I think listening to his music made me realize that, like, Hip hop music could be like that. It could be high energy and also pretty, but also like th- deep and intense. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think the rage comes from growing up in a punk background and shit. Um, it's a really free type of energy. You feel me? You get to let go. 
it's and and truly I think that's just one outlet that some people need, uh, especially if they got ty- that that type of pent up like not even rage, not even anger. It's yeah. just this type of like energy inside that you just want to let go. Mm-hmm. It's high energy and it's 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 volatile and it just needs to get out. And I think that I think I do a good job in giving people the the space to do shit like that. Yeah, definitely. Yo, I like I like that you're a rager. Uh, fun fact, you're actually the first per- first person ever where uh, where, where I've been in the mosh pit. Uh, I forgot what song it was you performed, but that was my <laughs> first mosh pit ever. <laughs> Your mosh pit was it crazy. was it with CP Radic? I think so. Yeah, cuz you you were like like as soon as the song played you're like open up the fucking mosh pit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, I want to see how it is. <laughs> oh, age. fuck, and man. Like, yo, your fan base is crazy. I don't even necessarily. You, you really got ragers, though. I don't like to think I have a fan base. I just think when I get on stage, people get my message and yeah. they, they get my energy and, and they're okay with following along. You feel me? No, definitely, definitely. Um, and then I want to talk about uh, you got any future projects coming? Anything in the makings? I'm, I'm always making music. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I'm always making music and I don't get a project idea until it comes up. You know, um, currently I'm not exactly thinking about anything specific. Um, I do a lot of mixing and mastering for other people. You know, my boy, uh, Bino Beat the Case, is really putting in work. And I think he's going to do some good things. Um, You know, I'm always putting in work. Me and Kobe got a few songs. You know, I, I don't know, dude. Like, I get so bored so quick, so easily with a lot of things. Yeah. And sometimes I get to a point where it's like, I don't want to just rap over beats anymore. You know what I'm saying? I want to make a country song. Um, so, I don't know, dude. Like, nothing specific right now, but I'm always working on stuff. Yeah, that's it. I like that. And then, uh, last but not least, you got anything last to say? Anything you want to, final words to say to the camera? Um, definitely pull up to the show. It's going to be the best show of the fucking season, best show of the year. Um, if you're not there, and if you don't buy one of the 100 tickets, then you're definitely missing out. Um, Reno, in general, has a lot to expect out of it. I think, I think there's a lot of potential, and I think there's a lot of hidden gems yeah um personally i think it's always been partially part of my job to help bring the city up and do everything i can to get it there um and that's why i'm still here you know what i'm saying um i just i don't know i can't wait to see what else there is to offer you know what i'm saying i want to go do shows I want to travel, I want the music to take me places, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that, Trey, I like that. And uh, anything anything you want to say to someone who's watching who probably wants to try doing music or someone who's going through something right now, any, like, some inspiration you want to give them? I fuck with that. Um, so I'll start with that first one. If you want to do music, fucking do it. Um, Don't ever stop yourself from doing what you want to do. Always follow your instincts. Always follow your your tastes. Always follow your your, what what do I want to call it? Like uh, your wants. Follow your wants. Um, I think there's a reason there's a reason why you like certain things. There's a reason why you want certain things, and I think you need to follow that um, to truly get to where you want to be in life. moment you start telling yourself that you can't do anything or that you don't deserve something it really makes it true um anybody who's going through something right now um just know that you got it and there is tomorrow and all you can do is your best one thing that i like to tell myself is that all you can do is your best and that's literally all you can do um anything after that is just stressing or doing too much um ride the wave do it do what you can with what you can and the rest will follow. Oh, yeah. And then one, one more last thing, because I'm just curious. It's just like a curious question. Uh, what do you think your angel number is? Um, mine's probably. Okay, I got a few. Honestly, I, us, I'm always us. I'm always looking at numbers and stuff. Yeah. Um, one of my main ones is 138. Yeah. 
138 kind of has to do with uh, letting go of what doesn't make you happy. Okay. Uh, the first house I ever lived in was 138 Mount Rose Street, and that number has been following me on ever since. I like to see sixes, I like to see sevens, and I like to see eights. Tell us about um, Eights in general remind me of infinity. Um, and turn it eight sideways to the infinity. Um, so it's abundance. It's number. It's it's uh it's numbers. It's abundance. It's it's uh infinity. You know. So I like eights. Sixes are really interesting to me. So I'll tell you this. Me and Kobe, when we were recording the Stay Busy song, when we were recording the song, we recorded it in room six 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 at the GSR. Um, and that's our biggest song so far. You know what I'm saying? But I just think it was really interesting that we just got that room and this and that, you know. Um, Harrison Hobbs, um, his birthday is March 6th. Mine's October 6th. Our best friend in high school was on January 6th, like 666. Crazy. It's followed me for a long time, right? Um, little shit like that. I love sevens, though. Um, my life path number apparently is seven. That's the, that's the path of the spiritual loner. Um, which I totally see. Thank you so much, Trev, for your time. Yeah, no doubt, Thank no doubt. Thank you, High Visions. Yeah, of course, always, man. Love Any, you guys. Anything you want, anything you want to uh, shout out real quick? Yeah, shout out Global Goods. Thank you for having us. Thank you for getting us in. Um, shout out Hobbs. Thank you for being here. Um, motherfucking, thank you, High Visions, for pulling up. Um, thank you for getting this done with me. Um, shout out Holland Project. Uh, can't wait for that show. Um, shout out everybody on the lineup. Fucking shout out my mom, my brother, uh, my dad. Uh, I don't know, bro. Anybody who fucks with me, I love y'all, I promise. Oh, really? Fire. All right, man. Thank you so much for your time, Trev. See you later. Peace out.